Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. Today I wanted to talk about some fundamentals within DaVinci Resolve and that's node graphs. I think there's this really big misconception online with node graphs and how they need to be this big complicated mess of things in order to achieve a really nice image but that's really really not the case. So the first thing we need to ask is what a node actually is or what does it do and it's pretty loose online there's no true set definition all it says is that it's the building blocks of colour grading and it really is but I really like the way that Colin Kelly puts it in that a node is an idea and you can do whatever you want in that node but it's how the, the nodes interact with each other that you can start to produce really interesting results or changes to your image. So we're going to hop into Resolve now and I'm going to show you my node graph that I use on every single image regardless of the project and hopefully just demystify what nodes are and how to build your node graph. So we're now on Resolve and you can see we've got this image here just from a wedding film that we did recently and we've got this node graph that's currently all been disabled. We're going to turn them on one by one just to talk through what they're doing so you can get an idea of how they work. But this is my normal node graph that I would use on any project pretty much. And then for column management, all we're doing is telling the timeline to work in DaVinci Wide Gamut. And then we're going to be doing our outputs at the clip level. So we've got our first node here, which is a serial node. And all that's doing is using a color space transform effect. And we are telling it to input S Gamut 3, S Log 3, and output to our timeline. So DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. And if we turn that on, you can see that it changes slightly and at the moment we're just seeing DaVinci wide gamut because if you remember our output is the same as timeline so we need to get that to a display color space so to do that we've got this other CST which is our output so if we turn that on you can see that's going from DaVinci wide gamut because that's what this space is from here out to Rec 709 gamma 2.4 and that's just the display colour space what most monitors are going to be able to receive and understand in a nutshell. So as you can see straight away this is looking a bit overexposed and we've got a bit of work to do. So the first thing I do is apply a look to any image that I'm working on just because it gives us a good foundation and it gives us gold posts or constraints. The reason you want to do that is so when you're working with a look any adjustment that you make is going to support or enhance that look. If you were to do all your adjustments first and then apply a look, you might get some weird results or it might just completely change the way the image is being rendered and look weird. For today, we're just working under a LUT and if we just turn that on, you can see it's doing some really weird stuff. But the good thing is because we're working upstream from the look, that data is still there. All this is, is the display. So this is the final image that you're seeing. It sounds weird and complicated, but when you start working in this way, it will quickly make sense. So the first node that we're adding is a serial node for our exposure. And we're working in linear. And I like to do this with exposure because it kind of operates in a more photographic way. It's kind of like you're increasing the aperture on your camera instead of just working your lift gamma gain. So if we just turn that on, you can see the gain's been brought down quite a bit and it's brought everything back. We've got detail back in the dress, around these leaves, on people's shirts, all the details there are not clipping anymore, which is great. So the next thing is we're going to add some contrast and honestly, it wasn't too crazy to begin with. I was quite happy with it, but I just add this here. As always, even if I'm not doing much with it, I've actually reduced the contrast a little bit here. But again, it's on a case by case basis. You could change it around a little bit, just like that. And I think that looks fine. Honestly, the thing with color grading is it's just a taste type thing. It's all down to you. And that's why you get better over time because you will just learn and develop what looks good. So now that we've sorted out our exposure on our contrast or pivot, we can see that the image is starting to get there, but it's still not looking quite right. I think it's a bit magenta across the board and everything's kind of leaning one way. If we look at our scopes, we're sitting in an okay place, but I think there's some work we can do to make that better. So if we just turn on our balance, 
you can see we've pushed a bit more to green, a bit more to cyan, we've got a lot more colour separation across the board and that's really what I like to go for with my balance, just as much colour separation as possible as well as looking after our skin tones and they're still sitting in a good place but they're just looking a little bit desaturated and that's just because we, when we use the offset for our balance we shift all the colours in our image. So to fix that we've got saturation down here and if you watched my previous video we are working in HSV and our channels 1 and 3 are turned off. So if we turn that on you can see we've not moved things too crazy but straight away we're bringing those skin tones back and all the desaturated areas are being brought back up and the areas that were already heavily saturated and not moving too much and I think that's starting to look really really good and then we've got this layer here which is just another serial node but we've added a mask to it just to bring down some of the outside a little bit and you can see that's not doing anything too crazy it's just bringing down the edges so with this node graph you can see it's really simple there's nothing crazy going on the only thing that I would say is a bit weird is this parallel node here you might be asking well why have you done that and it's really simple these three at the top are my primaries so exposure contrast and balance they're the three main things that I do as a color correction point and then down here are my secondaries if I want to increase saturation or if I'm adjusting anything specific in the gamma gain or lift I'll do those down there and then my masks or anything like that belong there as well if I want to add a vignette and all that's doing is taking 50% from the top 50% from the bottom and merging them into this one layer and pushing it out to the rest of the node graph. That goes into our look node which is of course a compound node just to organizational purposes and then that goes out to our Rec 709 CST which is what we're seeing here as the final image. It's nothing crazy and once you start to break it down it's really really easy to get your head around. It's not this super crazy complicated 50 node graph that's just way too complicated for no reason. That's not to say that things don't get more complicated than this, they do and they can and my node trees do get a little bit crazy sometimes but as an entry level point I think if you stick with this method you probably won't go wrong in my opinion. Really quickly someone did ask the difference between a parallel node and a layer node in my comments and thank you for that comment it's a really interesting question and honestly not too much they both kind of do the same thing they just work a little bit differently so the parallel just takes 50% from the top, 50% from the bottom, pushes them together and you work down the node tree. Great, cool. And a layer node kind of works that way too. And if you've ever worked in Photoshop with layers, it's kind of like that, except your top layer is at the bottom, which is really confusing, but you get used to it. And one really popular thing that I've seen online is the bleach bypass effect that are popular in like David Fincher films or anything like that. So all that we do is we change this to monochrome and because this is our top layer, all we're seeing now is this monochrome look being pushed out to the rest of the image. But the cool thing with the layer node is if you right click here and change the composite mode, kind of like how it works on Photoshop, we're gonna change it to overlay and yeah, that doesn't look great from the get-go, but all it's doing is overlaying the top node over this bottom node. So the cool thing with this is that if we change a few of these settings here, and I'm just playing around eyeballing, I'm not doing anything specific. Let's just push these all the way up. And obviously this isn't really a look you'd go for for a wedding film, but it's a quick bleach bypass look that you can achieve with the layer mixer and you can see that's the before and after with that. I think if you're a beginner, if you're just getting started or you don't want to go too crazy with colour grading, this node graph is a really good starting point. You've got your primaries which I think if you nail those and you're working under a look, you can get a really really good starting point or just a really good image. I don't think this is too far off the mark. I'd be happy to send this to a couple or a client, whoever. So yeah, that's it. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have a better way of working with your node graphs. I'm quite happy with this one, but someone else might find that useful. 
And thank you for subscribing. The last video has done pretty well, in my opinion. I'm just trying to get into this a bit more. And um, yeah, stick around, subscribe if you learned something new, like the video, leave a comment, all that good stuff. And I shall see you in the next one. Peace.